Okay, in this tutorial we're going to create a very simple table and drape a tablecloth over it. So first of all I'm kind of going to create the table. Uh, it's going to be a very simple one. So first of all I'm going to create some standard primitives here. First of all a cylinder uh, in around the zero zero point here. Drag it out to about, uh, there we go, about 250-ish and give it a height. Now rather than rely on uh, guesswork from the mouse, I'm just going to punch in hard data here. So 250 and 20, I suppose. That'll do there. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to increase, well, let's set the sides to maybe uh, 30, I suppose, should be enough there. Alright, that gives me a nice smooth um, circle here. Okay, that's that one done. So I'm going to go create another one and this time it's going to be the uh, the center column so let's create it out here and just move it up and put it there uh, give this a height of 750 I suppose that's, that's the radius first of all uh, let's give it a radius of 50 and a height of 750 there we go and this time I'm going to move it into the zero zero position. So having it selected here, click on the move tool and just change these to zero zero zero. So zero, zero, and Z is zero already. Um, I might as well do the same here. So I'm going to move the, um, the base plate. You can see it's a little bit off there. So zero and zero. Okay. So they should be perfectly centered on each other. Uh, next thing to do is to create the actual tabletop itself. So I'm going to create yet another uh, cylinder. I'm going to give this one a diameter of what, 750, I guess. Let's drag it out near enough and give it a height of. There we go. Uh, so let's change this to 7 radius, not 7. Yeah, this is 750 this time. And the height will be. Mm, yeah, why not stick to 40 mil? Okay, that's that. And what I want to do now is take this uh, our tabletop here and place it on the top of the column. So click on the move tool. First of all, I'm going to send it to 000. zero, zero. So that's that much done. Zero. And there it is at that point. And I'm going to push this up at 750 in the Z direction there. So there it is. That's the table created. Um, not too bad. That base actually looks a little bit, uh, a little bit too narrow for the diameter of the table. So I might just increase that. So back in here, under this radius of 250, I'm just going to up this to 300, and see how that looks. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay, uh, it's also a good idea to get used to naming the individual component parts. So what I'm going to do is grab the base first of all, right-click on the side here, and just uh, rename it to base and uh, call this one column so rename CLLU column and we're going to call this one top alright so we have our table elements renamed great so the next thing to do is create the uh, tablecloth itself we do this by creating a plane and dropping it over the table uh, much like you do in real life so let's go into our create here, standard primitives, and select plane. So I'm going to create a tablecloth, and uh, let's make it this shape here. Okay, so it's um, rectangular shape, it's not perfectly square. And uh, if we look at this thing here, it has 100 segments. Uh, you know, make sure the number here is quite high, because we're, you know, you see in a moment, we're going to animate this and bend it over those. Um, so let's just even out the numbers here. Just change the width to 2500 and let's change this to 1800. Okay, so that regularizes those a bit. Um, now currently if you look at it, the, this plane, this will soon will be the cloth, is um, at the bottom of the table. So we need to push that up. So we'll grab this and uh, push the height to, let's go to 850. So you can see now that it is uh, over the table, which is exactly what we want. All right, so having done this much, we should be able to apply the cloth modifier now. 
So before I do that, actually, I'm just going to change the color of this to red so it kind of jumps out a bit. There you go. Now, uh, to apply the cloth modifier, first of all, we select the plane. Then we go to our modifiers here and select cloth. Now, this is achieved by using a simulation. So what we're going to do is uh, set up some properties associated with this. So first of all, the object properties itself. Um, it's come in as plane 00, zero there, which I probably should rename to tablecloth, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to set this to be cloth. And I'm going to use one of the cloth property presets here. And these are the, the where the, the values are all stored. So we can see we've got cashmere cotton, flannel, heavy, heavy leather, uh, polyester, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to change that to cotton and uh, leave all the defaults as they are from there. The next thing I need to do is set up a collision object. So basically, when I drop this piece of cloth, where is it going to, what's it going to hit? So I'm going to add an object, and the object I'm going to add will be the top. That's our tabletop there. So if I look at plane zero, it's set to cloth. If I look at top, it's currently inactive. So what I want to happen is I want this to be the collision object. So I'll turn that on and make sure that enable collisions is there and click OK. So that should be um, that should be it. Uh, we're not quite really ready to run the simulate yet. I just want to check a few more parameters uh, down here. So what do we got under simulation parameters? Um, we have our units here, so centimeters per unit. This is original unit setup. That's fine. We got Earth's gravity in there, which is nice. Um, and we have self collision enabled. Make sure that that is enabled because we want that to happen. We want the um, the cloth to hit itself if if needs be, and not pass through itself. Um, so with all of those parameters set up, we should be able to click on the simulate, and uh, it should go to work. So there we go, click on the simulate, and this is going to be run over 100 frames. And you can see there the average frame duration of what, two and a half seconds. So this whole thing is going to take four minutes to run. Now you can already see what's happening here. The table cloth has hit the top of the table and is now starting to fall over it. Uh, it's starting to fall over it quite nicely. All right, I'm going to pause the video and then come back to it when it's finished. Okay, the simulation is now finished and we can see our tabletop and tablecloth here. So let's just uh, have a quick look uh, at that. So let's maximize this. All right, it's not looking too bad. Uh, there is a couple of problems with it uh, and I'll go through those in a moment. Um, as you can see there, it, it looks pretty good. It's not bad now at all. Okay, first up, uh, this problem here. And what's happened is the tablecloth has bent through the tabletop, which of course would never happen uh, with a real material. So we need to watch for those kinds of, of things. And um, a couple of options there to deal with it. I suppose we could possibly um, change some of the parameters. Uh, associated with this, so increase the number of uh, segments on this, or, well, we'll see in a moment. Um, now, the other thing to note is if we look at this, and go back into the viewports, because it might be a little bit easier to see, you can see that the tablecloth is actually draped below the base here. And you have to remember, this thing exists in free space, there's no floor underneath it. So, in reality, you would have seen uh, that these parts hit the floor and um, and cause a problem. Now let's see. Here we're just getting away with it on these two corners here but these are definitely not going to work. So that's just positioning, change the size of the tablecloth. You know, it's not, not a big deal. Um, let's see, is there anything else? That doesn't look too bad. All right. Um, all right, let's just finish thing, this thing off and uh, do a little bit more work to it. What we're going to do is uh, apply a shell modifier, and then we're going to convert it to an editable poly, which makes it just a wee bit more um, useful. So, okay, grab this again, and under my modifier list here, I'm going to use the shell modifier. Uh, there we go. And you can see here we have an inner amount or an outer amount. So I'm going to push this outer amount to... Uh, two millimeters just to represent the thickness of the cloth itself 
and you should see there that uh, this is all now doubled up and uh, if I just maximize this viewport here you should now see that there is an edge to this you can see it just here and in under there as well so you can start to see that this now has some thickness to it as opposed to just being a straight up plane all right so there's that now the next thing we need to do is um, well it's the finishing part is grab this and convert it into an editable poly and that's it it's uh, it's finished now so we can now grab our tabletop and uh, we'll look at the slim cylinder properties here oops grab that again where's my tabletop and uh, yeah I think we can leave it there <laughs>